In the Genshin Impact meta, Animo support are often regarded to be one of the best in the entire game simply due to the sheer amount of utility that they can bring to the table. Namely, something like Kaza or Sucrose are both super amazing top tier characters that everybody should be using right now. But while both of these characters are really really strong, that's not what we're interested in today. Today, we're going to be asking which one of these is stronger than the other. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and it's time for Showdown. As always, if you're enjoying this type of video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm a lot. Let us get right into their play style. In the Genshin Impact meta, both Sigros and Kasa are usually played as animal support, providing a bunch of buff as well as utility to their party. We're going to be taking a look at these later, but first let's talk about their other play styles. It is possible to play Kasa by building attack damage and crit and doing a bunch of plunge damage, or just putting 4 TF on Kasa instead and just doing a bunch of plunge spam. Generally speaking, these play styles are not too effective compared to just building him as a Animo support. However, on the other hand, building EM on Sucrose and using her as a taser driver is actually pretty meta at the current moment. Nevertheless, at the current moment, being able to proc a bunch of swirls simply using her normal attack, Taser Sucrose is a really, really solid team that is an alternative playstyle available to Sucrose. But again, we're going to be mostly focusing on her as a support as that's usually what she's being played for. With that being said, let's focus on the amount of buff that they can provide to the rest of their party and help them do much bigger damage. Let's start with Kaza. Kazu is able to utilize his elemental mastery and every single time he swirl an element, he'll provide a damage bonus to party member with that same element that he swirl based on a percentage of his total elemental mastery. Usually, we're looking at about a 30% damage bonus increase depending on the amount of elemental mastery you have. And keep in mind that this is only for party member with the same element that you swirl. So if you swirl hydro, only your hydro party member will get the damage bonus. Your power character wouldn't really get it. So for example, if you're playing like Hutao Sing Shoes and you swirl Hydro, your Sing Shoes will be able to get the damage bonus, which is excellent. However, your Huta wouldn't be able to get the damage bonus, so that's something to be careful of. For Sucros, however, whenever you swirl an element, any element, your entire party will get a elemental mastery bonus based on a percentage of Sucros herself's elemental mastery. You don't have to swirl the right element, swirling any element will do, and their entire party will get a elemental mastery boof. Although, do know that when you do swirl the right element, party member with the right matching element element will get an extra 50 elemental mastery. Usually we're looking at about 200 to a little bit more elemental mastery bonus to your party member. However, on top of being able to grant your party elemental mastery bonus, Sucros being a Cowless user is also being able to carry the really really strong Cowless Turing Tail of Dragon Slayer. The Furling Trail of Dragon Slayer, also TTDS for short, is able to grant you 48% attack bonus to one of your party member whenever you switch from Sucros to that party member. In combined you have not only the elemental mastery bonus to the entire party, but Sucrose is also able to grant one of your party member a 48% attack bonus for 10 seconds, which is really, really strong. As Kazuha and Sucrose provide completely different buff, the one that is going to be better and more suitable for your situation is going to be entirely dependent on the character or team that you're running. Depending on which character you're trying to buff, Kazuha might be better or Sucrose might be better. For example, if you're trying to buff a amplifying reaction character with no ICD and those are characters like Hu Tao or Shang who do a vaporize damage without any ICD, then Sucrose Elemental Mastery can really really help out a lot as Elemental Mastery is really strong when you're doing Amplifying Reaction. Not to mention the 48% attack bonus is just a extra cherry on the top. However, on the other hand, if your character doesn't do Amplifying Reaction, then the value of Elemental Mastery usually decreases a lot. And in this case, even though Sucrose can still provide 48% attack bonus to that one character, usually we probably prefer Kazu with his damage bonus over the attack percent bonus from Sucrose. So it overall really depends. There isn't a, like a clear winner on who is strictly better at buffing the party. It just depends on the calm that you're running or the character that you're running. However, when we're talking about buffing multiple character, then everything changed. Now, for one, while Sucrose can provide Elemental Mastery bonus to the entire party, Elemental Mastery is usually only really useful for one character in your entire party since you have to trigger any reaction in order to utilize Elemental mastery and usually only one character is actively triggering reaction at all time. Maybe if you play an electro charge team then there are a little bit more than one. Of course you will still have the thrilling tail but the thrilling tail buff only benefit one party member strictly at a time since you have to immediately swap to that next character. And so the thrilling tail doesn't really have a way to buff two characters at a time so it's not too unfair to say that Sucrose can only usually benefit one character sometimes maybe a little bit more but most 
most of the time up to one character. On the other hand, for Kazu, he can actually easily give his damage bonus buff to multiple different party members. The only requirement is that you have to spoil their element, and so if you have two party members of the same element, for example in the latest double hydro team, you do Yilin and Sing Chu's. In this case, you have two hydro characters, so as long as you swore hydro, then you can actually benefit both Yilin and Sing Shu's with your damage bonus buff, which is absolutely massive as both Terker are able to do a bunch of damage. Depending on the team, it is not too uncommon to run two of the same character with the same element. We're looking at things like Ayaka Ganyu, Ayaka Shanha, Kokomi Sing Shu's, Raiden Fisho, and the list go on. And of course, if you happen to run three of the same element, like Mono Pyro or Mono Geo. Actually, Kazuo doesn't buff Geo because Geo is doomed. But you get the point. Kazuo can easily buff all three characters at once, which is really, really valuable as all of your character now have a huge amount of damage bonus increase. Now, of course, previously we talked about Kazuo buffing multiple different party members with the same element, but you actually can also buff multiple different party members with different element as well, known as double swirling. This is a technique available to both Sucrose and Kazuo, so let's briefly cover. It. Double swirling is a very essential technique to utilize when your party contain multiple different damage dealer that is different element. For example, once again going back to like a Hu Tao team, you have Hu Tao doing a bunch of damage, but you also have Sing Chu's, who is a hydro character instead of pyro characters. So in this case, you have two characters doing a bunch of damage, but they're a different element. Likewise, go for a team like International, where you have Chao and Shang Ling, one of them being a hydro character, one of them being a pyro characters. And when your team contain multiple different party members that are doing damage, but are different element, it is very essential that you do a double swirl. For Sucrose, double swirling is quite easy actually, since Sucrose is a Animo Callus user and you can simply apply Animo Reaction by using your auto attack, usually by using a combination of your elemental skill as well as your auto attack. Not to mention that Sucrose actually have a secret technique known as Goba Swirl, which allows you to swirl entity like Goba himself, and it could be extremely useful when it comes to Ayato Bay Prize team, where you want to swirl the Hydro from Ayato Elemental Burst, but also swirl Pyro from Goba, which complete the double swirl setup. Even though Sucrose only provide buff to one party member usually, the VV4 set is still able to shred enemy elemental resistance to the element that you have swirled it. So if you're able to swirl both Hydro and Pyro, the enemy elemental resistance to both Pyro and Hydro is going to go down, which allows both your Hydro party member and your Pyro party member to do increased amount of damage. So it is essential that you do double swirl in Sucrose. However, since Sucrose only massively buff one character, it is not too important if you mess it up. And of course, just like Sucrose, Kazuo can also do this double swirl setup to buff both of his party member. The thing here to note is that Kazuo have a much harder time doing double swirl since he doesn't have a normal attack infusion by default. So you have to use both your elemental skill and your elemental burst in a very specific order in order to double swirl. One of those usually swirl one element while the other swirl the other element. That also means that it is much more essential to build energy recharge on Kazuo as your burst is much more significantly important than Sucrose. We're gonna be covering how to properly double swirl on these characters in a near future video, so don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But if you are able to double swirl on Kazuo, then you'll be able to grant both element party member the damage bonus from Kazuo. So again, those are like Chao, Shang Li, or Hu Tao Sing Chu's. And in this case, since you're giving two party member a massive buff on top of just shedding their elemental resistance, you will overtake Sucrose no matter what team you're playing. So as long as you double swirl on Kazuo, you can overtake Sucrose in terms of overall damage in pretty much every single team. Both Kazuo and Sucrose have good CC as well as grouping, however they do function differently. For Kazuo, his elemental skill have a press version and a hold version, and depending on the situation, you might want to use one or the other. Surprisingly, Kazuo's elemental skill have really really high stagger damage. On his elemental skill, the hold version actually have about 300 poise damage, which could easily knock enemy into a stagger date. And so if you ever use a Kazuo hold elemental skill on Whopper Flower, and you realize that they stop moving, that is the reason 
reason why. However, the most important factor is of course Kazu elemental skill come out directly on top of him with him being the center. This makes it much easier to predict where it's gonna come out and how big the radius is gonna be and it's significantly easier than Sucrose. But Sucrose elemental skill is not to be underestimated either. Just like Kazu, Sucrose elemental skill can group enemy nicely as well and doing a bunch of CC. Now, unlike Kazu, Sucrose elemental skill come out in front of her, usually targeted with a enemy in the center. This makes it much harder to position, however, when used properly, it is honestly just as strong. Overall, it is hard to say which one is strictly better. I do definitely agree that Kazuya is much easier to use, and so most people probably prefer Kazuya here. However, Sucrose 1 is definitely not to be underestimated, and when used in the right situation or properly, it is also really, really strong. But Sucrose does have an additional form of grouping slash CC, which is her elemental burst, where Kazuya elemental burst doesn't really do any grouping at all. Sucrose elemental burst is kind of unique where it kind of pull enemy to the center but then it also kind of knock enemy into the airborne and never really true to the center. This is quite annoying because it means the enemy are not actually tightly packed up and could be annoying to do a bunch of AoE damage. However, the knocked up is kind of great for enemy that are really annoying and like teleporting around as the continuous CC can make sure that they don't teleport around and these are enemy like Wapothar Assassin Mages. The continuous CC from Sugros Elemental Burst can make sure that they kept staggers so that you can have an easier time of doing damage before they teleport away. With that being said, let's talk about their elemental burst slash skill infusion. Sucrose and Kazuya both have infusion on their elemental burst. That means that their elemental burst can change to a different element and apply that element, which could be very, very essential. Fortunately, both Kazuya and Sucrose absorb element in the exact same order. When a Animo absorption ability come into contact with multiple elements, there's actually a priority list, and it go from pyro to hydro to electro to cryo. That means that if you have both pyro and hydro present on the field, your elemental burst usually would go pyro as pyro is a higher priority. This is the same case for both Kazu and Sucrose, so there is no difference here. Of course, the exception here is Animo Traveler, which do cryo into pyro into hydro into electros, but that's not the topic of today's video. With that being said, while the element order is the same for both Sucrose and Kazu, the range where they find the element to infuse is actually really different. For Kazu, that is going to be everything in his elemental burst that he hit, including himself. So if you have an element infused on himself, it will actually take that element and it can infuse that onto his elemental burst. An example could be using Kazuya burst on a Bennett elemental burst. In this case, because Bennett elemental burst infuses you with pyro, then Kazuya elemental burst is guaranteed to go pyro. This makes it very very easy to control what infusion element you can go on your Kazuya elemental burst as it is very predictable and very controllable. Unfortunately, this is not the case for Sick Rose. For Sick Rose, you have to hit the storm eye or the middle of her elemental burst in order to infuse an element. Now that is a little counterinteractive because Sugro's elemental burst, while it pull the enemy toward the center, they never truly reach the center because of the knocked up. Usually, Sugro's elemental burst actually fail to infuse of any element at all because no enemy ever reaches the center. So usually, Sugro's elemental burst only remain animal and it does not do the infusion. And Sugro's elemental burst infusion is very, very very inconsistent and can almost never be used reliably. While Kazu Elemental Burst is very predictable and consistent and can actually set up a lot of different enabler. For example, it is possible to use Kazu Elemental Burst to go Hydro to enable for Hu Tao or use Kazu Elemental Burst to go Pyro and enable for Mel Gadu. These things Sucrose cannot do at all because again, her Elemental Burst is just too unreliable. It is possible to force Sucrose Elemental Burst to go a certain element by having that element infused onto you and standing directly on top in the middle of Sucrose Elemental Burst. But for your everyday average player or just your everyday Abyss run, this method usually is not really used and it's just very inconsistent. And so Sucrose Elemental Burst is very inconsistent compared to Kazuya. Now, as always, aesthetic is kind of like a personal opinion. Everyone prefers different things. While Sucrose is really cute with her elf year and stuff, I think Kazuya is is much cooler as a Inazuma samurai character with a sword like ching 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 ching. Okay, that's enough. Now for artifact, there isn't really anything to compare here, 
both of these characters run a 4 speed VV set with full elemental mastery. However, for their weapon, they differ a little bit. For Sucros, we have of course the most popular but also free to play option, the Throwing Tail of Dragon Slayer, which is a free star book that anyone can easily obtain R5. Although occasionally, you can also run Sacrificial Fragment on Sucros to get extra elemental mastery but also an extra elemental skill proc. For Kaza, who uses the sword, we do have the free to play option Iron Strength available for crafting in Genshin Impact, also providing elemental mastery on a substat. However, you will often hear Fear Crafter never really recommending Iron Strength on Kazu because throughout this video, you might realize that Kazu Elemental Burst is just way too important and therefore will much prefer to run something like a Phonia Sword or a Sacrificial Sword which provide Yara instead. And finally, let's talk about Constellation. Of course, by default, we do C64 Star and C05 Star. However, Sucro's Constellation are surprisingly useless. For C10, it is quite good as it gives you an extra charge on her elemental skill. However, the rest of her constellation are often not used. C4 could see some use if you're playing her as a taser driver, but as this video is focused on the fact that they're both a new support, it is not really considered. For C6 circles, while it looked amazing on paper, giving your party member 20% elemental damage bonus for the corresponding absorbed element. As we mentioned before, circles elemental burst is very inconsistent and almost never really absorbed a element, and so this 20% damage bonus is also very unreliable and is practically speaking never really going to happen and therefore is not factored in in this video at all and this constellation is just not very good. So with that being said, Sucrose constellation are kind of meh. C1 Sucrose is practically the same as a C6 Sucrose. You don't really see any extra benefit from Sucrose constellation. On the other hand, as Kazu is a 5 star character, his constellation are actually quite good, especially constellation 2. Constellation 1 can reduce the amount of energy recharged you need by a small amount. It is not as significant as people think, but being able to cast your elemental skill again after using your elemental burst could reduce your energy of charge by a little bit. However, the most important aspect here is Constellation 2 Kazuha. Constellation 2 Kazuha provides the rest of his party member with 200 elemental mastery as well. If you recall at the beginning of the video, that is one of Sucrose buff, providing about 200 to 250 elemental mastery to the rest of their party member. As this Constellation also gives you 200 elemental mastery to the rest of your party member, a C2 Kazuha will pretty much always completely outblow a C6 Sucrose, assuming even if you don't double swirl. And if you do double swirl, then well, it is just a very huge difference. Now keep in mind that even though I'm talking about how C2 Castle is amazing, I do not endorse spending money that you don't have on this channel. Please do not go and spend money for C2 Castle if you don't have money. In fact, C2 Castle is not even that good nowadays because there are a lot of character that doesn't utilize elemental mastery that well. And again, those are characters like Raiden, as we mentioned before, or like Hyper Ayato, Yen, and Sing Chills. So while it is good, and would definitely overtake Sucros, it is not super amazing anymore based on the character roster we have and don't spend your money on it, unless you want to. Now of course there are a few other final aspects that differ Kazuha and Sucros. For example, many might argue that Kazuha is not only more fun to use, but just a little bit better in the overworld since he has a jump where Sucros doesn't have anything like that. But as this video is mostly focused on the Genshin Impact meta side of stuff, we are only really going to focus on that they are both a Nemo support and we're going to be looking at the buff and utility that they have to the rest of their party wish we did. But with that being said, let me know who you think is the better Animo support in the comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.